All right, hello everyone, Doug here with the LincolnList.com. Let me welcome you to another edition of Stock Market Mutterings where I will take a grope in the murkiness and I will try to make some sense out of this market. As senseless as it is right now, I'm going to try to do my best. I'm going to share some of my favorite trade setups here with you or some of the things I see throughout this week. And hopefully, hopefully the stuff I share with you can put a couple of bucks here in your pocket. This will be for the week that starts on the 9th of March. So I hope you guys are doing good. If you're struggling a little bit with this, it's got you thrown off course a little. You're having some hard time maybe reading some of this stuff. Make sure you visit the LincolnList.com. Click on the trade room tab and start trading with us. So I do apologize first here with my spy chart. I was doing a class here during the week and we were just going over some different kind of levels and stuff like that. So I got some chicken scratch on there. I normally don't have this much junk on there. So I do apologize. I mean... So let's just talk about this. This market is volatile. It's got a mind of its own. And I mean, we're talking about ranges now that went from on the Dow like 50 to 150 points a day, maybe that, to 1,000. I mean, we literally since Friday have had two 1,000 point up days. And of course, we've had down days almost like that too. And I think what else is interesting here is we had one of the largest up days ever in stock market history this week and still finish red on the week not me personally finishing red but the market was down for the week that's showing you how wild this is so i didn't do one of these last week we kind of go back and we talk about it the fed came out with this emergency rate cut really set things in motion and started to feel like hey look we're going to rally the market felt like it wanted to rally then the next day, it's just like, no, market doesn't want to rally at all. And I'm not sure. I'm not, I, don't, I try to think a little bit about this stuff, but I have this tendency, the more that I divulge into something, the more I try to get to the bottom of something, the more it hinders me as a trader. I really just want to keep things simple. Now, the next day that it sold off, I thought, well, maybe they felt that, you know, well, I actually didn't even wait the next day. It sold off right after. I mean, it had this really big pop first, then it sold off. Now, the interest rate cut has something that's always been used in times of crisis, and I think people understood that after it was done, that this has only happened in economical climates of, of serious uncertainty, like the dot-com, like 9-11, for example, or the credit crisis, the collapse of Lehman, and maybe people got off thrown here a little bit by saying, hey, look, I thought everything was okay, but I guess it's not. But then the market rallies right back and, you know, okay, we're, we're bullish again. And then the last two days there, just a total smoke out. And I can understand you got bits and pieces of this coronavirus overhanging. The fear and panic on top of this right now is off the charts. Literally, the news, the media has got people shaking in their shoes, buying stuff like 4,000 rolls of toilet paper, standing in Costco lines, drinking Perel. I mean, my goodness, guys. It's out, it's out of control. But as we've always said, panic itself is a much stronger emotion than greed. So when panic comes into the market, what, what happens here is people become unlogical. Is unlogical even a word? I could probably use a better word than that. They're not logical with their money. They make bad decisions under pressure. They make bad decisions when they panic and they lose money. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't mean the market won't go lower. It's just people have a tendency to exacerbate things when it comes to fear. And that's the market we're in. So you never can underestimate just how much something like this could, could take hold. So I'll give you a few of my thoughts and ideas again. Sorry for the chicken scratch. I really think going forward, you know, we're already under the 200 day here on the spy which is pretty big deal you know most of the time you get under the 200 day it gets it gets nasty and that's what you're experiencing here it's sort of the line between good versus evil but you've got a couple of bases down here where we were hanging around late in august where the market really developed a longer term base that spread from august all the way to october and this was the trade war sell-off if that's what you want to call it a sell-off and you, you've been grinding up ever since then so not only was the market due for for a sell-off anyway because it was technically overbought on just about every reading imaginable you, t you toss in this panic virus in here and well you're, you're going to get things like this to happen but kind of moving forward here you, you've got to hold up this level if you start losing this it's really going to get aggressive possibly down to 270s or 260s you got to go way way deep 
into your charts to find really solid support. And that isn't until 2.30. Now, I don't think we're going to go that far, but I could see maybe in this case, if you lose this low right here, you may see a 15 to 25% type of correction, a really impactful, steep correction, maybe something as violent as what we saw back in December of 2018. Now you will have, nonetheless, we are going to deal with the volatility for probably a month. I've talked about this before, but I'll just real quickly touch on it. When you look at something like August, this is normally how corrections take place in the market. Let me open this back up. Like you go back here in August, you get the initial sell-off and you see what happened here. It's almost like, take a look at the chart, like mini me down and up here down and up here. Now it's a little difficult to see with all my junk on this on the screen there, but they're kind of the same, see? Just this one's like under a magnifying glass. That's all it's just a thousand times exposed larger. But it's the same thing. Drops down here and it's gonna haggle around. So I would expect the same type of movement that you're gonna get about a month's worth of back and forth, undecisive, volatile action and that's just what you're going to have to deal with here and you just adjust accordingly and I think in an environment like this we all kind of slow it down a little bit it's not going to be a watch list here about how to trade a market correction but you got to lower your size got to use stops you got to wait for the right opportunities to give you a good risk to reward and you're going to be stopped out a lot you're going to have some back and forth action you're getting these wild Friday rides where this is two Fridays in a row the market just jacks up on steroids late in the day so just going to have to deal with it. It'll eventually work itself out of the market. You just got to be patient with it. Pick and choose your shots wisely. Now, there are a couple of stocks here that do have some relatively good setups. And one I've been kind of talking about here over and over again, is, and the kind I like, especially in the markets like this, is this Roku. Um, it's already pulled quite a bit, but the thing about Roku is it was going down before the market was going down. And then, of course, when the market goes down, it gets hit as well. But then on the days that the market has rallied, Roku really has not participated. So you're looking at, I mean, really since the beginning of this, beginning of February, since just roughly the first week of February, this thing has only had a couple of positive days, period. I mean, period. This thing has only had a couple of, of positive days. And it's, it's, it's like a month straight of selling on this thing. And it's and it reached down into this all important $100 level. Now, once you were up here, it, it, you know, if you look back at some of my tweets, I was talking about, I thought this was going to go to a hundred anyway, and it did because that's the support here. You got a double bottom here that was stretching from July to October. So, I mean, really going forward, that's got to be, that's got to be the number. I mean, that thing gets tossed look out this thing is really really going to get punished probably down into the mid 80s and it sounds like it's far away but it isn't doing good even on the market updates it's struggling so i kind of want to look to short it now i'm not interested in shorting this thing in the hole while it's down there at support only on bounces i would like to see it bounce a little bit it also could be a buy for you shorter term traders scalpers day traders I could see a buy off of the 100 level. I could see it trying to fight this off because when it got down to its first level of support this week, let me open this up right here, got down to its first level of support. The next day it rallied, see 106 to 114. Yeah, about $8. So it put in an $8 day. Now it was a one and done. It sold off the next day. But if you're intraday trading and you're looking for cash flow, you've got something lined up here that could go either way. I think overall, if we're talking about What's happening in a week or two, we're looking at Roku much closer to $90, but it could really put up a fight down here at this mega 100 level and, and possibly go to 110, 115 first, and then that would actually make a short better. So pretty, pretty interesting chart right here. I want to keep really close watch on this. I'm using it right now as a day trading tool, and I am just shorting every bounce I can get on it. Anything like this in the morning, anything like this, anything like this, anywhere I can get some sort of a bounce, I am interested in that. Now, some of these also have some other good looks to them. I'll share with you Lulu. Uh, this one is is down at a at a pretty good support level itself. You got what I call like a lowercase H. You're going to see a lot of patterns that look like this that have dived down and then retested. It almost looks like just like the market itself. 
and it's sitting right here at its 200 moving average. So I think a lot of charts that you're going to see like this are going to give you multiple entries right now going into next week. And that's going to be either they hold the support and give you the opportunity to get long with stops under support, taking advantage of who knows what, maybe a thousand point up day, a two, three day, 3000 point market run. It puts you in the position for a favorable risk to reward scenario. If that doesn't work out, the other plan that you have, whether you want to call it plan A, plan B, whatever, the next plan would obviously be to short them if they start losing steam, if they can't hold their spikes, if they start fading, if interest isn't brought into them while they're floating around the highs, then you also have a short trade. So when you're looking at some of these, they're laying at critical levels right now where they're either going to hold or they're going to fade. And quite frankly, they could do them both. They could hold early and then fade later in the week. Who knows? Or, or fade first and then break back later. I mean, some pretty interesting charts. And I think you also could put BABA on that list too. It actually did pretty good, I think, this week holding up. It was strong compared to many of the other names. But, you know, you're sitting down here with a, almost close to a triple bottom. So pay close attention to those numbers down here. This one's got quite a distance to go from its. 200 day moving average. Now, on the flip side of that, this has been relatively strong. I know this is not a strong looking chart. This is a relative strength compared to what the market has gone through. This thing is not nosedive like many other stocks that we've seen. So, what that really means is if the market does turn around and starts plowing through a couple of strong days, this would most likely be a long because it's going to be one of the first to move in the market before the market moves itself. So, not a bad look there with Bob. And another one I'll throw here before we wrap it all up, kids, is Team. I've been talking about this one for a little while. Team. This is another one here. This thing was ready to break out while the market was dumping. And it's holding up around this 50 moving average here. On this, red, this is where the red line is. I mean, it's holding up really solid. I know it's a distance away. It's got some, it's got some lower volumes than normal other stocks that I trade. It's got some wide price ranges now, as a lot of stocks do. But pay attention to this 155.50. I think if it gets back up there and encounters that again, you're going to see it break through and probably get a substantial move to the upside. Right now, it's just on watch for me. I'm mainly just working the market as trades and Roku shorts on bounces. That's just sort of my go-to thing for day trading right now. I'm keeping it simple. But this kind of excites me here, too, that if we do turn around, we start to see some bullish activity, maybe a few bounce days. This thing's laying up here. It's held up real well. Just like Bava, I'd probably be more inclined along those two than some of the other names. So anyway, guys, stay safe out there. I know it's crazy. I know it's wild. If you know, you, you don't have to be a hero here. Just calm it down. Dial your position sizes down a little bit smaller. Wait for setups to develop. Just be a little bit more patient with things. You're more in the survival mode now than thriving. Don't try to force anything. Just wait it out. Things will slow down. It'll all work out in the wash. Come back around and you'll make 10 times more money that way. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. As always, if you need help, feel free to reach out to me. Support at the LincolnList.com or just join the live trade room. Go to the LincolnList.com, click on the trade room tab and start trading with us right away. Take care. I'll talk to you guys next week.